Hi folks, this is all the fruit and today I'll be fruit foraging in Monton, the most subtropical place in continental France. Well, it's necessary to say continental France because apart from the Mediterranean island of Corse or Corsica, uh, France also has a lot of tropical and subtropical possessions in basically all oceans, Atlantic, Pacific, Indian Ocean. But this Monton on the Côte d'Azur has the mildest and most subtropical climate in all of continental France. I start this video here in the Italian part of the region. The Italian part of the coast is called the Riviera and the name has become so famous that everybody who has a fancy tourist coast calls it the Riviera of something. Well, firstly, because here I want you to admire this beautiful gigantic Eritrina tree stuff you are used to see mostly in the tropics and subtropics but not here in the foothills of the alps yeah the alps who gave another name to geography alpine climate meaning really cold mountain climate well the alps are very important for the subtropical climate here as you can see that's the other reason why i'm starting the video here on the south you have the mediterranean sea on the north, you have the Alps, and squeezed between them is this narrow strip of coastline which is among the most expensive in the world. Actually, it is the most expensive in the world. <clears throat> well, this climate attracted rich people for centuries, but it also attracts a certain type of plants. See the Alps, especially right here where they are quite their foothills are quite tall and close to the sea. They protect the area from the northern winds, from the Mistral. And the Mediterranean basically acts as a sort of air conditioner. It cools, out, it cools down the weather in summer, but it warms it up in winter. And the town of Monton is basically the only place in France, in continental France, where they used to have a commercial citrus production. They provided most of the citrus fruits for France. They also used to have a commercial olive production. They still have a kind of a commercial olive and citrus production, both very unusual for France. Here in Italy, we have the same climate. Basically, the most, uh, the mildest parts are, yeah, like 15, 20 kilometers up the French coast and maybe 30 kilometers up the Italian coast. That's why they are here we also have the most interesting botanic gardens. But for Italy, this climate is not that unusual. Yeah, it's unusual for northern Italy. The Riviera is in northern Italy. It's one of the northernmost coasts of Italy. But Italy also has a lot of similar areas in southern Italy. This here in Calabria or in Sicily wouldn't be too unusual. France, however, despite having a, a few stretches of coastline which stretch further south than this. It has nothing in continental France that stretches much further south than Monton and nothing that's that well protected by the mountains. Basically, they say in the area of Val Rame, that's, that's basically the place behind all those uh, fancy boats. There hasn't been any frost throughout the entire 20th century since they basically had uh, decent um, decent uh, weather monitoring and it's amazing because this area is not only close to the Alps but it's at the same geographical latitude as southern Canada basically the same geographical latitude as Chicago and if you have lived in Chicago or in southern Canada you know that they have quite harsh winters so, it's that amazing to have a subtropical climate, a subtropical frosty climate here at the same geographical latitude as Chicago or southern Canada. And we also have all those super rich people who, uh, who bring expensive stuff here and all those fancy botanic gardens specialized in tropical and subtropical stuff. Uh, we are in the beginning of May, so not really the fruit season. But let's see what we manage to forage in the most subtropical ever part of continental France. 
Still on the Italian side, some pancha cactus I cannot quite identify. Firstly, because the panchas are notoriously difficult to identify. And secondly, because of the drought, everything is less than well developed here. Look at those fruits. Here we have this year's fruits. The plant is trying despite the harsh winter. Uh, not a harsh, but an extremely dry winter. Here winter is the rainy season, but not much rain this year. Here we have the fruits from last year. The only tiny fruit that's kind of well developed is this one here. I might get something edible out of it, but it's too much trouble for such a tiny morsel. Look at this here again. Fruits from last year, fruits from this year. Most of the fruits from last year didn't develop anything. Yeah, very bad year. This combined with the month of May, well, the drought in winter combined with the month of May, makes for a very meager foraging at this moment. Basically, n normally right now in May, I would still be able to forage a lot of wild greens, but as you can see, it's as dry as at the end of summer. Palms are supposed to be adapted well to the drought, just like cacti, right? Well, wrong. Firstly, most palms and cacti grow at rather moist areas, and secondly, as you saw with the cacti, they, yeah, even drought -tol tolerant plants are coming at their limits. The palm trees are more typical for the nearby Italian town of Bordighera here behind me, but they grow throughout the uh, throughout the Italian Riviera and the French Côte d'Azur. This is Phoenix Dactylifera, the Arabian date palm with the big juicy dates. And yeah, uh, dry weather is actually good for the fruits because they are very prone to rotting. However, here most fruits are hanging on the other side, on the private side. I don't see much falling to the road. So I'll skip those tasty fruits. Here you see the succulent, semi-succulent, semi-arboreous native spurges. Not showing them to you because they're edible. Spurges are definitely not edible. They'll kill you. They're toxic. Showing them to you to show you the, the amount of the drought. The leaves last year, they couldn't even drop them properly. They died on the plants. Here on the other side, two very interesting pistachio relatives. On the left, the mustix from which the word masticate comes, or the name mastix comes from masticate. Yeah, this is what, where the original chewing gum comes from. This has been chewed for thousands of years. And here, the terebinth tree, another type of pistachio. You can also get a lot of nice chemicals from this one, and, and, also, a, and also a zap, but it's not as nice and tasty as, and chewy as the mastix. However, none of them, unfortunately, will give you edible pistachios. Well, the Italian side seems peaceful. France has amassed a huge army at the border crossing. Look at all those police buses. And it seems that they are doing some sort of control. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Today's victory day. It's not gonna be as crazy as in Moscow or Ukraine, but still that amount of of police vehicles is a little bit offsetting Guards with submachine guns lots of refugees being uh, herded by NGOs uh, Reporters crews. Yeah, it seems that it's all about the refugee crisis. France, Italy is an internal European border, but still, it's a choke point. So I hope the trouble will be only here on the border crossing and not inside France. Speaking of a choke point, the border is right at this gorge. <laughs> Good luck trying to cross here. You basically have to use the roads. A lot of figs down there. Yeah, figs, they're very tolerant to the drought, but they prefer growing in such gorges where they get an amount of water even in summer. Fortunately, they are not in season right now. Apparently, I was white enough, pale from the German spring, so they let me pass without trouble. Here we see 
the stuff with the yellow flowers oh wait it's focusing on the it's focusing on the fence the stuff with the yellow flowers is the tobacco tree nicotiana glauca and i think this this nice huge purple stuff which is like five meters tall is vigandia but yeah tobacco tree it's a pest in subtropical and mediterranean areas and this might be the northernmost place in the world where it's kind of a pest yeah you can smoke it but i don't recommend it strelitzia it might look a bit like a banana it's called i think the cameroon banana and actually the seeds inside those big bracts are edible but yeah they are not juicy like bananas they are tough and right now i don't see anything within accessible distance lily pillies they like to use them as hedges here i'm seeing flower buds but i've yet to see some fruits it's a very tasty australian cherry like fruit which is crunchy like an apple a good size avocado tree here on this parking lot yeah nice oh not just a good size it's a gigantic avocado tree it's growing down there over two floors beneath me <coughs> stem probably 80 85 centimeters thick wow unfortunately it's not in season it just flower and i don't see anything poly ah here is one pollinated flower with one tiny avocado yeah i guess it's suffering from the drought also but amazing folks to see such a giant avocado tree at the same geographical latitude as southern canada isn't it this thing must be 80 90 years old and it's not the only one there are at least two big avocado trees and it's possible that this thing above the white building is also a giant avocado tree and to the left behind it a banana plant despite the very dry winter the amount of lush tropical well subtropical flowers is still remarkable i have never been in this part of the cotas in spring but i think <clears throat> normally it should be even more here to the left a gigantic strelitzia this this plant must be like what well look at the size of the gate eight meters tall at least and here you can see really nice strelitzia stems you don't get to see them in such a size very often even in really tropical and subtropical areas this should be Opuntia pubescens, one of the few tree-like prickly pear species. If we don't get run over by the cars, I can show you <coughs> that it actually has a stem like a tree. However, this one looks strange. This could be a hybrid or a different species. The fruit are not pubescent enough and they are a little bit too big. So maybe it's some strange hybrid. Yeah, no way to reach them up there, or I would like to try some. Yeah, there. It could be a hybrid between pubescence and Ficus indica. There is strange stuff on the market, folks. And here, a group of feral camphor trees. <coughs> Those are invasive <coughs> all the way to northern Italy and southern Switzerland. They are basically a reminder of the tropics, but they don't seem to be that tropical well considering the invasive nature and here look at that in the rails a pomegranate and a fig however i doubt those will ever produce edible fruits a small quince tree and there is even a fruit here however this is an autumn fruit oh yeah by the way foraging today is going to be quite meager because well most fruits are not in season and most greens places where they have not been watered like here <clears throat> are just not as lush as they are supposed to be well i could eat the tasty cabbage palms but over there i'm seeing something much better monstera deliciosa the delicious monster plant let's see 
if you have some delicious monster fruits on it. Nope, no delicious monster fruits, but I still have the rest of a monster fruit in my backpack. They ripen step by step. You cannot eat the whole fruit at once. You have to eat like two or three centimeters a day. And if you have no patience, the monster fruit will sting you with thousands horrible little noxious stingers. Some beautiful specimens of the caper. Those little buds are being foraged at about that stage. And they're being pickled and sold as a spice. If you don't sell all the buds, here up there you have the first flower, really beautiful big flowers. My phone today has trouble focusing, I don't know why. And after you've enjoyed the flowers, you can actually collect and pickle the fruits. However, eating them fresh, they are just disgusting. <laughs> My first encounter with the French prices. The pizza, well, if you want it in the restaurant, it's plus three euros. If you want to take it away, it's plus 250. Ah, okay, so it's the price of the pizza plus three euros. Ah, no, it's the price of the pizza plus three euros plus 250. But why? I'm not taking it away. Yeah, that's how it is. You pay like seven euro for the pizza plus three euro plus 250. Oh, maybe I should go back to Italy. The prices were a little bit more humane back there. Or maybe. I should scale up my foraging. Orinoco or Topocho bananas, among them Cameroon bananas. Ah oh, yeah, I see a, I see two, three bunches of bananas hanging on the Topocho, but they all unripe. And here in the foreground, the banana with the reddish veins, that's an NZ ventricosum. Three different banana-like things, of which only one is called Musa and not a single edible fruit. Chili palm, that's one of the tastiest palm species, however, around here in May, I have never seen ripe fruits on those. The maracuya, the commercially most important passion fruit of them all. And this might be more or less the northernmost area in the world where you can grow it with some success. Actually, nearby San Remo even saw a ripe fruit on one of those. This one, I don't know why. It's not even flowering yet. Look at that fig tree, covered in fruits. And the fruits are dropping. If you think, well, now I can stuff my face with them. Nope. Not all figs are edible. Those here are flowers which are not even supposed to turn into edible fruits. So, yeah, probably nice to look at, probably not so nice to clean them off the pavement, and all of them definitely not edible. Carissa macrocarpa, a rare edible, well, the plant is not so rare, but it's, uh, it's rare to have edible Apocynaceae fruits. And this seems to be a totally different variety from the one I saw in nearby Ventimiglia on the Italian side of the border. In the Ventimiglia there were fruits, here I don't see a single one. Another date palm species, the tiny Phoenix Robellini. Test tiny but tasty dates, but <coughs> all those are not in season and also looking not so good. <laughs> also looking really tiny compared to Phoenix Aculifera in the background. See the hills covered in olives? Over there above this wall, and a giant ancient olive plantation with more than 500 olives, <coughs> and many of them are centuries old, showing us that the climate here has been mild for hundreds, well, rather for thousands of years. One of the very few positive aspects of the drought could be, just could be, some edible dates. The Bedouins say the date wants to grow with its feet in the water and its head in the fire. You might wonder why dates are just the production of desert countries. Uh, nothing good here. Well, the dates cannot actually grow in the desert. They need an oasis, or at least a subterranean water source. <clears throat> but 
but they can also not grow in moist places because the fruits, as soon as they ripen, they are really prone to rotting. That's why you don't get dates from moist areas. Well, here on the Côte d'Azur, they are always grown as an ornamental because the fruits will rot throughout most of the year. Just a little rain is enough to let them rot. But this drought could, could maybe give us a really exceptional edible dates in the French spring. Hmm. Not rotten. But quite dry and boring as far as the states go. This one. This one is rotten. Yeah. Unfortunately, they eat need only a very tiny amount of moisture to rot. <clears throat> Hmm, this one seems good. However, hmm, what about this one? Should be still good. Ah, another one fell. This one is rotten. The dates are barely edible, but barely edible is still better than non-edible. What are those citruses? Uh, I hope they were tasty calamansi, but they are just puny, water-starved, bitter oranges. Now look at that tasty calamansi, finally. This is a citrus kumquat hybrid, which means that it has sweet edible rind. Mm. 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 Delicious. They are really nice and overripe. Need to pee, otherwise I would have harvested more of them. Look at that, a couple out-of-season pomegranates on this plant. <coughs> Most of them burst during the last weeks and are rotten. Some of them still have their reddish pinkish outer color. You could be able to scoop out a couple edible seeds from some of them, but nah, this wall is a little bit too high for me. I'm hungry and foraging is not going to do it for me outside the fruit season. However, those bars down here, they are also fancy. I need to get to a cheaper part of town. Well, cheaper is very relative. <laughs> We're in France here. Guess the palm beaver has hit the area. No palm trees, no tasty dates. See the lockwoods? No, not down here. Up there, big tree covered with tasty yellow fruits. Too far and too high. But from up here I have a bird's eye view on those date trees. Just ripening. Hmm. Maybe there's gonna be something good on the ground. Look at that. The yellow fruits are turning well are dying and turning brown. That doesn't mean they are rotting. However, if there is any rain. They are gonna rot, otherwise they will dry up into the tasty dates you find in the supermarket. Anything forageable in this cute little park? Pomegranates are not in season. Olives must be processed first. Don't eat anything of the sucas. Oh, mock lime, we gonna get there soon. Yeah, let's get mocked a bit. Could eat the wood sorrel, there are two species here in this abandoned flower pot, but they are just sour. Also nice pelargonium, makes good tea, tasty and with healing properties. 
but apart from that uh, a nice queen palm Menton has a couple really tasty specimens but I'm afraid they are not gonna be in season thick berry also not in season lily pili and date palm and saskaton all three very tasty fruit trees or shrubs but all of them not in season just like the date palm in the background well rose petals are a decent food Yeah, sweet with a trace of bitterness and aromatic. Oh yeah, the mock lime, Muraya paniculata, one of the smallest citrus relatives. When you take the fruit, well this one is overripe and rotten. When you take the fruit, it looks like a tiny red lime. It is basically a tiny red lime. You pop it in your mouth, you notice a flavor that's a bit similar to citrus, but it's mostly bitter. And there is no juicy inside. Well, the bitter flavor is from the rind. The inside is basically those two big seeds. That's why mock lime. It looks like the cutest tiny red lime. Imagine what you could do with this thing in cocktails. Limes that look like cherries but they are disgusting that's why mock lime there is a similar more tropical citrus with tiny red lime like fruits which are actually tasty enough down here in this treasure trove of dog poo I noticed something very interesting cox X. yeah this is actually a fruit salpicroa oreganifolia not that I'm gonna forage anything out of this well you put a torch to it the stuff could explode but in the background there is a bigger coxex plant look at that here it's coming up it's growing all over this little shrub it's flowering profusely let's see maybe we can find one tasty out of season fruit nope just the same thing as in Italy only flowers it's a decent fruit to look out for in the canary islands i ate it in february i guess here it will be ripe in july here again the coxsack flowers but no fruits yet look at that not only the local lemons and basically everything in monto is lemon tin because Unlike in the rest of Provence where lavender, lavender is the main tourist crop, here it is lemons, but that's not what I want to show you. Avocats du jardin, that means avocados from the garden. It means that some avocado trees must be in season right now. Very interesting because in Italy, as well as on the French side, we only saw flowers, but... <coughs> I'm not giving up hope. If they're in the shops, they're also gonna be in the gardens. Guess that I can forage lemonade and grapefruit juice here for a price. I decided to eat in the production of tasty orange peels and got the breakfast with orange juice included. Horrible prices, folks. Horrible prices. I just don't understand the pricing system. It's always more expensive than I expected to. And I guess they think I'm American because they put ice in my orange juice. That's a crime. That's a blasphemy. <laughs> Are those fair game for foraging? Some nice huge kumquats. Ah, ah, stay away from them. There is a limit to what the locals will tolerate from homeless looking foreigners. Well, technically I am homeless. Sleeping on the beach. 
doesn't qualify as a home. Here we have agave attenuata, the spineless agave. The flowers of this thing, well, let's turn. The flowers of this thing are not too bad, but unlike with most other flowers, I noticed that the young flowers taste disgusting, while the older ones are quite tasty. Also, the nectar was quite good. Also, I think with such a mild tasting agave, the heart of the agave should be good. Here we have the young fruits. So many other parts of agave atunata edibum. Hmm. The taste is okay, but it's a little bit too tough. Maybe find the younger fruit. Slightly bitter. Not too great, actually. <clears throat> Here's some onion, some leek. Don't even know if, if those are some remnants from the ornamental stuff or if those are wild. They're a little bit too old for eating right now. And also I don't like leeks, raw leeks with nothing. A market. I like markets. Let's go inside. Lots of nice fruits. Well, the oranges are from Italy. So are the lemons. Basically, the area of Manton has become too expensive for commercial production of citruses, so they basically all come from abroad. Nice, like fancy, particularly those beautiful fruits here. Well, not too many, not too many fruit and vegetables indoors. Those vines here are not ivy. They're creeping figs, ficus pumila. Oh, tasty lizard, but I'm a vegetarian. Well, nice ornamental evergreen ficus species from the tropics to the Alps. It's very popular. The Chinese even found the way how to make the fruits edible. But on this plant, I don't even see food. Oh, of course, there is one. It's not, it's, it's not good yet. But I bet, yeah, I should do some foraging with Chinese. They do amazing stuff with fruits and which we don't know how to use. Always know your date palms, folks, and you will mostly stay fed on good, big, tasty dates. You see this tree here? Thin trunk. Usually it doesn't have so many leaves, but this one has a lot of leaves. The leaves are grayish, bluish, and the fruits are big and tasty. Well, not so much on this one because this is a male, but this is the Arabian or African date palm phoenix tectulifera, literally the date bearing. This is the other popular date palm around here. Much thicker trunk. The leaves are more greenish here again. The grayish color of those, the greenish, almost yellowish color of those. And the fruits are small and tart and not really worth the trouble. Another plant with small and tart fruits, well, another palm with small and tart fruits is the European dwarf palm. The fruits are of very variable quality. Most of them are pretty disgusting. Some of them are good enough. But it's the only palm native to the European continent. And the palm, by a very huge margin, the palm that grows uh, furthest away from the equator. It's of course also one of the most frost hardy palms. Despite the fact that we see palms everywhere here and that um, not far from here in San Remo there is the biggest palm collection of continental Europe. Um, actually only a couple dozen out of thousands of palm species can grow in this climate because most of them are really tropical. But this one the least tropical of all palms and also kind of edible. Could be a slim chance of foraging a nice out-of-season pomegranate. Those already dried up and not good anymore. However, on this side I saw one. Uh, now I'm filming against the sun. Not good. Where is it? Oh yeah. Over there. It's a, no, not just one. There is a whole branch. Look at that. They still have there proper color. The small one hanging there and the two exploded ones. Yeah, granites, they do explode. And pomegranates. 
Yeah, that's where the granite got its name from, from this fruit. So the two exploded once, even they might still have a couple edible seeds. Four meters tall and right in front of a coffee shop in the center of the city. And the homeless guy trying to climb this thing, I'm sure they are gonna call the cops on me. This very queen palm specimen here has very high quality fruits. I made a video and harvested a lot of them two years ago. You can also see that's in incredibly prolific. The ground is covered with a thick layer of the seeds. The seeds are also edible, but <coughs> I prefer the fruits. Here also a decent sized lily pili. Do the ones here have no do the ones here not produce fruits or did I never catch them in season? What a pity. Lily pillies are great fruits, folks. Silverberries. The only new fruit in German winter or spring, but here the in Germany the season is still going on. But here in the much warmer parts of course the season has been long over. Yeah, good stuff if you have not other fruits to forage. A whole hatch of pomegranates. Well, we maybe find a hidden out of season fruit here. I'm afraid. Nope. Well, if you have no fruits, eat the flowers. Mm. Our pomegranate flowers don't seem to be too great. Another jelly palm. Yeah, in August and September the fruits are quite good, but I haven't seen a single one with fruits now in May. Dwarf palm, jelly palm, fan palm, queen palm, date palm, and there a small Washington palm. A buffet of edible palm fruits, but not a single of those trees is in season. Here a view on the Alps of the background protecting Monto from the cold northern Mistral winds. So let's recapitulate. Today the only edible thing I managed to forage was one single tiny calamansi fruit. Everything else I nibbled on, I would call it barely edible. <laughs> I remember so many foraging trips where I brought food with me and I had to bring it back because I was so full of tasty edible fruits. But May in southern France is not really the fruit season except for citruses and lockwoods and if I'm lucky also some mulberries. Some cacti growing together with similar and toxic spurges. Cacti are prickly pear and mother-in-law cushion. No matter what people tell you, folks, there is one rule with cacti. The fruits are usually edible, the plant is usually toxic and non-edible. <laughs> Funny enough, mother-in-law cushion and prickly pear are two exceptions. Let's run. Oh, this is already too spiny. Look at that. I thought it's still young enough to literally brush off the spines, but nope. Well, anyways, the prickly pear nopales are a popular, though painful vegetable in northern Mexico. It tastes like nothing, like the most boring cucumber, but it's soft, juicy, green vegetable. Spotted another bunch of queen palms through this tunnel here, and why not? Let's go check them out. Nope, nothing ripe, nothing ripe, nothing ripe. Ah, wait, number four actually has a bunch of fruits which have ripened. Oh, kumquats, I want those. Which have ripened recently. See this bunch? There are still a couple yellowish fruits caught up there. there even a couple brown ones lying on the ground, but they are not good anymore, unfortunately. The central avenue of Monton connecting the two most important features, 
the Alps that make it the most subtropical part of continental France and the casino. The good thing for us is here in this road they are trying to show off their subtropical heritage. Look at the dozens, probably even hundreds of bitter oranges. I have to say it again, they are not bitter, they are sour and they are actually quite useful for juices, cosmetics and other stuff. Here they are being harvested right now. Citrus season is over and now they start falling in huge amounts. Look at that. They are collecting them in huge amounts, loading a whole truck full of them. Oh no. Okay. They are mixing them with the trash. I hoped actually because firstly you can make quite good lemonade from them and secondly not too far away from here there is the town of Grasse which is the center of French perfume and cosmetic production and those things you can make a lot of wonderful cosmetics from them I kind of hope they would separate them from the normal trash and bring them either to a place to make lemonade or to Grasse to make perfume fortunately no they are taking them down with enough care not shaking the tree but cutting each one separately which is good for the tree but I really wish they would do something with those they must have tons of those fruits around the city a fancy garden with lemons lockwats, bananas probably mandarins in the background also some kumquats or calamansis here but unfortunately no access a garden for the bees always take care of the bees folks a lot of bee hotels and a lot of flowers which are not flowering yet you take care of the bees and other insects you get a lot of fruits by bees i don't just mean the honeybees i mean mostly the wild bees they do most of the work and those other stuff like flies and wasps and butterflies not so much beetles beetles are not good pollinators but wherever you don't have a nice wild insect population but industrial agriculture you actually have to get beekeepers to transport giant collections of beehives from the rapeseed fields to the apple fields to the cherry fields and so on in order to ensure a good harvest so better build bee hotels and plant nice flowers for the bees and you already got one of the biggest predispositions for getting plentiful fruits yeah the central boulevard is a collection of themed little parks very nice if you are in Monton definitely check it out as I said they are the most subtropical place in all of continental France they have much more options than let's say doing the same thing in Paris gentlemen we don't stop our foraging trip till nightfall what about breakfast breakfast we've had it we've had one what about second breakfast Pippin I don't think he knows about second breakfast well what about I forgot the names of all those hobbit meals 8, 11 o'clock, spicy, 1 p.m., 5 o'clock tea, dinner, supper, dawn. I think those hobbits have more meals than me. That's how bad foraging is right now. However, it's not a bar hopping trip, but a fruit foraging one. So let's forage the fruits where they are, right here. Just don't run without paying. Oh no, right in front of the train station, <laughs> right here behind this concrete mixer was the biggest, juiciest bunch of bananas in the whole city <laughs> and now it's gone forever. Do they even know what they destroyed? This head huge banana bunches this was a public plant in a park 
and it was so prolific. Oh no! A nice big kiwi plant, that's the first. A kaki and the lockwood over there. However, well, if the kiwi was in season, we might have some chance, but not with the other things. Black locust. The whole plant is highly toxic, except for the flowers, which are too high. I'm not jumping with two backpacks. Nope, I'm not. Lots and lots of brambles. The fruit of the bramble is called the blackberry. And guess who is not in season right now? Opancha robusta, the prickly pear with big pads and really big fruits. I've done some heavy duty foraging on those things in September. But right now it's January and of course, guess what? It is a January, I mean May, but my point still stands. Here again, lots and lots of bitter oranges. Monton is the city of lemons, but lemons need a lot more care, so those prunus, uh, no, um, citrus exaurantium are much more popular as roadside trees, not just in Monton, but also in Italy or Spain. Here, by the way, the Curajong. The seeds are reasonably tasty, but surrounded by a lot of little prickles, which are horrible for your skin, so I'm not gonna pick any. Here we have dwarf palms with nice ripe bunches of huge, huge for dwarf palm standards fruits, but those are a little bit high. However, down there is a shorter stem. Ah, got one. Reasonable size, soft, that means there is a lot of flesh. Of course, the press is mostly fiber. It smells like dog shit. But it's sweet. Mm. Too lazy to forage a lot of them now, but not to really get many better things around here right now. More kiwis and bananas and apricots. And more important for me, those mulberries are in season, but they are too far inside this garden. Look at those apricots. In a month or two, yeah, actually in about a month, there's going to be a great apricot harvest here. A big cluster of bananas in this private garden, but I don't see a single bunch of fruits on them. More coccyx, but they are not in season. What a pity. Behind that, two very important spices. On the left, the Peruvian pepper tree. On the right, the bay leaf. But, yeah, when you have nothing to spice with them, even spices become kind of unnecessary. Pity, the coccyx, they taste like some crazy strong rum. Yeah, you can get drunk without getting drunk, but right now you can only get drunk on the dream. Wait a moment, here they are, here are the fruits. Still unripe, unfortunately. But if you find unripe fruits on a vine, go down, 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 and nope, nothing. However, unripe fruits means that in a week or two, oh, there are lots of unripe fruits here. In a week or two there might be, or if I'm lucky even now, so many unripe fruits, there might be just a couple ripe ones. And fortunately this was not only a very dry winter, but also a very cold spring. Not a good combination. Nope, no ripe fruits, but I'll keep an eye open for them, because if there are so many unripe fruits, there's a good chance I fight at least a couple ripe ones. What did I say? There is a half ripe one. It's still a bit too green. It should be almost completely white, but... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only already has a slight flavor of strong inland rum. 
the flavor must get stronger just as the sweetness hmm. however even now it's not bad has a bit more of a tomato yeah of a very strange tomato not bad oh here by the way a cylindro puncher the cousin of the prickly pear not really edible but it will not hurt you as much as the spurge to the right of it know you are cacti from your spurges folks or you're gonna suffer greatly and you might even die